maybe I'm selfish. I just wanted to keep on having fun all the time. We would not think about other things. A lot of girlfriends would go away. I had some years when I was thinking, you're doing the right thing or not, maybe. You maybe get on a proper job, you know, buy a house, get a family like everybody else. That, that was the biggest thing I think Tony and I had in common was we loved the sport so much. You would give up everything for it. I don't know if everybody feels that way, but I did. And I think he did too. I met Dino on the Grand Monte. I was sitting on a bus from the Grand Monte coming back to Chamonix and I saw this character and he was looking, kept it, he was very interested in, in, in us sitting there talking. I think he was listening to the American voice and... Yeah, we got along straight away, you know. Yeah, and we've been best friends since. It was amazing because he, um, his passion for skiing and for riding the bike was so strong, it made me, it made me love it even more. He lives on the Cape, you know, the hour outside Boston, right on the ocean. He learned me to fish. I worked a lot on the cranberries when I was young. There were certain parts of our life from childhood that I could see were a lot the same because of the farm. It was a lot like Tony. He would always have to go home from here to do the hay and to help his dad with the cows. So the farm life was, uh, it was a good connection. When he came to the States to visit, he saw the cranberry farms and you know, I could tell right away it, it, it interested him because he, he kind of felt the same thing, I think, that he does when he's home. On faisait même la piste comme ça, tu vois? On faisait la piste tout longueur, on faisait toute descente quand j'avais 7 ans, 6 ans. I grew up in the hills, so when I was a kid, there was always snow. And I loved the snow so much. And I was the first ski bomb in Engelberg. Skied all the time. There was no ski bombs back then. I did four or five seasons up there, and then I moved to Chamonix. I think it was 1996. I came to Chamonix and uh, was blown away, you know. I was thinking, man, why haven't I seen this place before? Why haven't I tried to ski here before? When I was still in high school, I was torn up what to do with my life. I didn't know if I wanted to stay and, and keep working for my family business, doing what the normal people told me to do, or if I should follow my dream a little bit more. It's all I could think about was the next time I would go to ski. So I left everything behind. I went to Vermont and uh, started ski bombing and started to take on skiing as a full-time deal. It was a good move because I'm still, I'm still living the lifestyle now. How much do I enjoy to be here? Oh, it's the best, uh, for me, it's the only way. I can only do this. It's a different lifestyle, you know? It's, um, it's more about um, play than work. Work as least as possible and try to have as much fun as possible. I think we, we both ski kind of a little bit the same style of ski. Think of pleasure, freedom. That's the nice thing about ski. It really, really gives you freedom. At first we're partying in the snow up on the mountain, and then when you come down, you're so happy and full of life. The party would, would keep on carrying on through uh, to the next night or maybe, maybe days, you know? High on life. Super great time with people in the mountains and you're having a great time with those people at night and you guys know each other really well. It doesn't get more intense than that, I told always. Starting to feel the snow. Yeah. See what the snow feels like, yeah, huh? No, it's, it's, it's getting cloudy there. Mm, okay. Ouch, Can, ouch. A little cloud cover comes in below us okay. now. Okay. You don't want to have to okay. It gets warm in the cloud, huh? When I came to Europe the first time, I recognized that you were much more responsible for yourself. You could travel in certain places that um, back in the States would be off limits. When I first arrived here, I hadn't seen enough bad experience to, to understand. Probably taking a lot more risk. Yeah, I had some accidents. My girlfriend was with me, she was a bit slower. So I was skiing a little bit behind. Then Marco met Daniela and a huge avalanche comes from the top. And I really watched that, yeah, that was, that was really tough. 
She died in front of my eyes. I was with him shortly afterwards when I heard the news and when he told me and I could see right away, I mean, he was, he had been really good friends with Daniela for a long time and for him to have to call her dad, she was an only child also. Pretty tough, I had to call her her father. That was one of the toughest, impressing thing I had to do in my life for sure. Not nice. When you live here quite a while, you, you see friends passing away. So. I've probably had over 30, over 30 people that I know really well that I would have a beer with at the end of the day that aren't here anymore. It's almost outrageous when I think about it. And I'm sure many people have lost a lot more friends than that, but. Uh, how to say, I not believe in God. My, I believe in there's a higher instant, you know, for sure. The nature made me believe this, you know, because it's so beautiful, yeah. But in the same time, it can bite you too, you know. It used to be very sad. When mm -hmm. I used to only ski and uh, I would never want the snow, I would want the summer to never come. But now uh, you get the, the Lavello and now you're not too sad anymore. But I still, uh, of course, on the last day of ski, you always are sad. Sure. Yeah, that's how it is. It was for me exactly the same, you know. Now we're getting into the mountain bike, so we have a really nice summer activity to do too. The main thing I think for my whole life has been maybe almost too much is the freedom. The freedom of not having to um, answer too many questions. Uh, the freedom of just being able to take your bike in the morning and go someplace and get lost for the full day and not worry about anything. I guess I never really stopped much to think much about the, the family life and to have the children. Yeah, for sure, I have to sacrifice maybe a little bit and having a family, kind of not so easy to a bit for a while, but now I'm okay with it, I think. Uh, you need to have the right person too to have kids too, you know. As you start to get, say, into your 40s, you start to think, man, I haven't, uh, I haven't even thought about having any uh, family life like children, this or that, but I don't know. Somehow it just keeps getting pushed away and, and you would just keep on pursuing what made you happy, and this is what made me happy. It's something that, uh, you know, ski bums learn over time that they appreciate every day, you know. Every day that they can go out and ski is a good day. That's why I would call myself a ski bum because it really is what brought purpose to my life and it's what brought me all the joy. I still, I think I'm gonna be still a ski bum now because I like it. You never know what's happening in 10 years, but right now, you know, I keep doing what I love the most, you know. I booked already an apartment for next winter, so, yeah. Thank you.